Hey folks, welcome to this video on Python's new JIT, Compiler or Just-in-Time Compiler. I'm your host, Nafiel Islam, a developer advocate at Sonar. Python has this new JIT compiler and you might be really confused because Python is an interpreted language. What are we doing with a compiler? What exactly is a compiler? Why now? And all these questions I'm going to try and answer in this video. But first of all, we need to talk a little bit about PET 659. This was the specializing adaptive interpreter that was introduced recently, I think as early as Python 3.10. And what is interesting about this specializing adaptive interpreter change was that this was setting the foundations for a lot more changes to come to the Python ecosystem. So if you go back to the motivation of PEP 659, you're going to see by adaptive and speculative specialization at the granularity of individual virtual machine instructions, we get a faster interpreter that also generates profiling information for more sophisticated optimizations in the future. What's interesting is that if we take a look at what this means, if we have a simple function that sums A and B together, and we kind of repeat this over and over again, the interpreter actually understands that, hey, this is always going to be an integer being added to another integer. And so you get something called a binary op, but the binary op is specialized to add int. And you can get this kind of information when you use the this module, you can pass in your Python object and you can set adaptive int is equal to true to tell you what adaptive changes have been made to the Python bytecode. What you're seeing here is the Python bytecode. And what you're seeing highlighted is the change to the binary op from regular addition. And this is what it looks like in Python 3.8 that does not have the specializing adaptive interpreter, which is that you just have your regular binary add. There is nothing special about it. There is no optimization, nothing. And in Python 3.8, you don't even have an adaptive is equal to true option that you can set in this.this. .dis. But we're not here to talk about the old versions of Python or the Python version that we're currently in. We are going to talk about Python 3.13, which will have this new JIT compiler. Now I've been building up to all of this because I wanted to show you how the Python bytecode has been slowly changing over time and over releases. But now we have two tiers of bytecode. And let me explain what that means. So on our left here, we have Python code, which is pretty simple. You have your function, you have your variables, you have your return clauses, all that good stuff. But then you get your tier one bytecode, which is your, your binary add, your load fast. And then in this brand new release of Python 3.13, we have a tier two bytecode that breaks down something like binary add into smaller pieces. So for example, you have underscore set IP, underscore guard both int, underscore binary op add int. And all of that goes into a specialized version of the binary and opcode inside of the Python interpreter. And eventually this is taken in by the Python interpreter and it's run. So in a way, this allows us to be closer and closer and closer to the machine code to a point where we can use a lot of the things that are generated in tier two bytecode inside of some kind of container that is machine code. But here's the thing. JITs are everywhere. There are all kinds of JITs, but this particular JIT is really quite interesting because it's relatively new. So all of this started in 2021 and this new method of a just-in-time compiler, the copy and patch compilation mechanism for this JIT is used because it works really well with dynamic programming languages. So what happens is you get your Python code, you take your tier one byte code, you take your tier two byte code, and then you take this tier two byte code, which is closer to the machine code, which has more information such as, you know, what are your caches? What are your constants? As well as things like type information. And so you can take this stuff, you can take this information, you can put it into something called a relocatable object file. And it's kind of like filling in the gaps a little bit. Take 
these operations, you put them into these relocatable object files, and then you compile it and you get machine code. It's much more simple to maintain because it's just like using a template. You just fill in the blanks with the relevant information. So for example, the machine knows how to add. Adding two integers is a very low level operation that can be done. And so what happens here is you take bits of the tier two bytecode, you put it into this relocatable object file, and then you compile that code and then you can run it. And that increases your speed by a lot because you're closer to the machine. And this has resulted in a performance increase from two to 9%. And you might say that that's not a lot. That's, that's, that's just sad, but, but it isn't. This is just the beginning. This is the very first time we've put in a compiler into uh, a Python release. And of course, all tier one platforms are supported. So if you think that's exciting, please go ahead and download uh, Python 3.13. I personally use PyENV to do it. And I hope to see you in the next video.